Before I begin this video, let me start with a little disclaimer first. This video was made for beginning reloaders, and the goal of this video is to answer one of the most common questions I receive. Many new reloaders don't understand the benefit of using fired brass or why the performance difference exists between virgin and fired brass. And most new reloaders don't know how to properly set up a sizing die for precision uh, once they fire their brass. And I've also met a lot of experienced reloaders out there who think virgin brass is just junk and they won't even start load development until they're on their second firing. You know, a few of the competition shooters I know don't even trust their load development until they're on their third firing. In this video, I'll take you through the lifespan of your brass and explain the key differences between virgin and fireform brass. Beginning reloaders tend to love virgin brass because it requires almost no preparation. All I do on my virgin brass is run an expander mandrel through the necks and put a better chamfer on them. Virgin brass gets you from the reloading bench to the shooting range in the least amount of time. But you need to understand what virgin brass represents to the reloader. Virgin brass is manufactured to chamber in any rifle made for that cartridge. And this means that it's almost always undersized for most chambers. This so-called sloppy fit in the chamber will affect precision and consistency. In addition to that, undersized brass has less case capacity, and you often find that loads with virgin brass hit maximum pressures at relatively low velocities. You know, in other times, you find that loads become severely compressed well below established maximums. Also, virgin brass usually has undersized uh, neck lengths, and it might take a couple of firings before you can trim them to an established length, and this will also affect precision and consistency. So in general, virgin brass will fit sloppily in the chamber, which will negatively affect precision and consistency to some degree. It's undersized for the majority of chambers by design, so the limited case capacity will mean that, you know, lower velocity should be expected with it. You'll also find that it takes about double the force to seat a bullet on a new case than it does on fired, uh, fire formed case. So this might affect consistency and precision as well. But virgin brass allows new reloaders to take advantage of reloading activity without spending time or buying specialized equipment to do proper brass preparation. Heck, you know, using uh, virgin brass, you don't even need a sizing die, really. If you're serious about reloading, you'll have load data for both virgin brass and for fired brass. You know, I hunt all the time with virgin brass, and I find that it's reliable when um, extreme precision isn't really important in an application like hunting most of the time. So keeping load data for virgin brass is worth it, in my opinion. And there's something else very serious you need to consider. Virgin brass has one glaring issue that every reloader is going to have to deal with. And that is that every brand is different. Sometimes drastically different in both quality and physical characteristics. Some brass like Lapois and Norma is very thick and will often have a full grain less powder capacity than other new cases. Other brass, like Hornady, is thin and will offer more capacity when it's new. Some new brass lacks quality and consistency, like 
Remington, Federal, and Winchester brass. You know, those low quality brass manufacturers often put out a product that will have boogers in the flash hole, crappy primer pockets, and huge weight variances from case to case. Some brass is very undersized when new, while other new brass is at the upper end of the SAMI specs. An undersized case eats up lots of energy when it expands in the chamber, so velocity will suffer to some degree with those undersized cases. So it's always best to use quality brass and to not mix and match brands because they are all different. After you fire your virgin brass, it's going to expand and stretch to the chamber's dimensions. This process is known as fire forming. In fact, the brass might be too tight to safely chamber at this point, so you'll, it'll have to be resized in a sizing die. And here's where you, make, you need to make an important decision as a reloader. Do you resize it to SAMI specifications or do you resize your brass to your particular rifle? If you don't care about extreme accuracy or your ammo is going to be fired out of multiple different rifles, you should always resize it to SAMI specifications. But if you want to make very precise and consistent ammo, you can resize your brass for that one particular rifle. And this usually means that you need to set up your sizing die to bump the shoulder back two or three thousandths. You'll notice that your fired case will hold more powder and will be capable of better velocity at safer pressure levels. Unfortunately, this is the point when it's necessary to clean, size, and do some brass preparation. Most serious reloaders organize their brass by batches. A batch of brass will stay together from the time that it's virgin brass through subsequent firings for the rest of its life. I organize my batches in containers or sometimes in uh, gallon sized Ziploc baggies. And I label the number of firings and the condition of the brass in there, whether it's uh, sized and prepped or if it's raw brass. A batch of brass will always go through the entire preparation process together. And it's a, that's why it's important to track that batch because once several cases start to fail, the entire batch is probably towards the end of its life. The amount of brass in a batch depends on its intended use. A competition shooter might consider 500 rounds of brass as a batch, where a hunter might consider 60 pieces of brass as a batch. These days, I consider, you know, about 100 to 150 pieces of brass from the same lot number to be a batch for my hunting ammunition. So don't go crazy and shoot too much virgin brass without establishing what your batch size is going to be first. In its simplest form, all you really need to do to prepare your fired brass is to clean it, run it through a sizing die, maybe trim the neck if it's necessary, chamfer and deburr the neck, and prime it with a primer. And that's all that's really necessary to keep reloading your brass. But other processes come into play like annealing, neck turning, flash hole deburring, primer pocket uniforming, neck brushing, expander mandrels, and something like a factory crimp die. And all of these processes add additional steps than what is necessary to make decent ammunition. Your level of brass preparation is going to depend on the quality of the brass that you buy and on the level of precision that you're seeking out of your ammunition. In my experience, if you buy high quality brass to start with, weight sorting, flash hole work, primer pocket work, and neck turning aren't necessary at all. I personally, though, 
like to anneal brass and use expander mandrels as additional steps to my reloading process. I feel that it gives me more consistency. I also use a Leaf Factory crimp die for my heavy recoiling cartridges. I definitely approach load development differently between Virgin and Fireform Brass. I think most other expert reloaders out there do the same thing as well. Your Fireform to Brass is going to fit the chamber better and have more case capacity, so it's going to result in a different load. Usually with my Virgin Brass, I'll do a small sample test to see where my pressure signs occur. I'll usually just pick a spot below the pressure sign that looks pretty good and initially go with that. This also gives you a good starting point for a powder charge when you develop your load for fired brass. After the brass is fire formed, I'll go through my whole brass prep process and do actual load development at that time. Using my virgin brass powder charge is my starting point to begin load development. Whether you do traditional load development or you're one of the cool guys that do the new nodeless load development, you get serious about load development when you fire form your brass. All good things must eventually come to an end and your batch of brass will eventually go bad and end up in the recycle bin. Some cartridges have case designs that last for a long time and other brass designs have very short lifespans. Cartridges with steep, sharp shoulders on them last, tend to last a long time because there's very little brass movement with those cases. But by contrast, belted magnums, which headspace off the belt, have significantly shorter brass life. You know, uh, just to give you a range of brass life here, I've had batches that went 21 firings, and I've had batches of brass that have only lasted six firings. You'll know when your brass is nearing the end of its life when signs like case head separation start to appear, splits start to happen in the case, or your primer pockets start getting loose. It's then when it's time to give birth to a new batch and start the whole process over again. And that is the life cycle of your brass. I've watched many YouTubers and internet forum participants claim that Virgin and Fireform brass have the exact same level of precision. In their videos or demonstrations online, you know, they're usually shooting a Savage rifle with a Chinese scope on some wobbly wooden table with horrible shooting technique. So don't trust those results. Expert shooters can definitely tell the difference between new and fire form brass. In fact, I would never expect to shoot little tiny 10 shot groups with virgin brass. I know it's going to have some form of inconsistency issues. But let's also not get caught up in that small group mentality. 90% of the hunters out there who reload won't be able to tell the difference, honestly, you know, de depending on the barrel and the brass. The difference in performance between virgin and fireform brass might be small and imperceivable to these people. I have some rifles where Fire formed brass is only 25 feet per second faster. And, you know, I have other loads where fire form brass is maybe over 100 feet per second faster. The difference in precision is often less than a quarter of, you know, a quarter of an inch at 100 yards. And even in my Ackley improved rifles, the parent case usually gives good accuracy and precision. So for most hunters, we're kind of overthinking things. In conclusion, for F-class and bench rest shooters, 
it's important to use properly fire-formed and prepared brass. For hunters who hunt at ethical hunting distances, it really doesn't matter most of the time. As long as you have an MOA or sub-MOA load fast enough to expand your bullet and deliver adequate energy to the target. And, you know, there is times with particular cartridges where you need fire form brass to do that. You know, especially if your uh, barrel likes a particular powder and bullet and you need to run it a little bit on the faster side. But I honestly believe that most of the people watching this video probably don't own a rifle or have the skill necessary to realize the difference between virgin and fire form to brass performance. So for them, the performance aspect might be irrelevant. But performance aside, it's important for reloaders to know the fundamental differences between virgin and fire formed brass. At the very least, it'll determine your reloading process for each type of brass. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you for watching, and as always, good hunting.